In this video, we're going to take the time to review a little bit about the Web XML Deployment Descriptor. This document will give us the ability to take some manual control over what our servlet does, some of the things about the servlet, and just essentially configure it through that XML file. Now granted, as we use the IDE, the IDE is very well integrated and gives us the ability to do some of that stuff without ever having to know anything about the Deployment Descriptor. But certainly, as you do things in the real world, you might encounter some legacy systems that have this and you may need to manually modify that file. And also it's, of course, extremely important to understand the inner workings of that file so that you know how to do it manually should you need to in the future or make some small tweaks or configuration changes. So right now we're running our current servlet that we just created in our last session where we have the hello world servlet up and running and it is at the path slash hello world. We mentioned before that we might want to take control of that. There might be reasons for that, such as needing to make that URL less available for public guessing. So that would be a pretty easy URL to guess if it was something more important like a login form or something like that. And so we might want to actually change the location of that. The other thing is we might change the extension of what's shown so that we, for whatever reason, know what exactly we're showing here or what path we're accessing if we want to have some form of conventions. So what we could do is actually go into the web content and the web INF folder here and find our web XML document. So we can open that up. And again, if you're on the design view here, that's fine. I prefer to modify in the source because I have direct control over the file and I can type whatever I want without having to try to add nodes and things through the actual design view. So here what I'm going to do is expand between display name and welcome file list and I'm going to create a servlet block. Now the servlet block is going to allow us to take control of a servlet, and that servlet block will require at least a couple parameters in it, and the first one's gonna be the servlet name. So we can hit the servlet name there, and that will give us the ability to insert a servlet name. Now you might say, well, this is just hello world servlet or hello world, and that's fine, but I wanna point out that this is actually just a variable that's used within the actual file here, the descriptor itself, that links certain parts of the file together. So it doesn't necessarily have to match. Obviously, you kind of want it to because it needs to make sense for you in the future. So we could name this something more useful than XYZ. But what really matters here is that we map the servlet to the correct class. And so that servlet class is going to be the hello world class that we created before with our full package reference. So that's company dot hello world servlet dot servlets dot hello world. Just the name of our class. Now I'm going to change this XYZ to something more useful. We'll just call it hello world. And that allows us to have something that makes sense and is a variable name. And the next part of the deployment descriptor that we need to change then is the actual servlet mapping itself. So this is where we're gonna take control of the actual servlet's URL mapping. So we can hit that. Of course, we need a couple things in here as well. And the first one, once again, is gonna be the servlet name. And that servlet name is required because this, of course, is the variable name that links these two sections together. So the system will know to link that servlet name that has the class hello world servlets to this servlet mapping. So what I'm going to do is create the URL mapping and so URL pattern is the actual code that we want. And here we can just name this URL whatever we'd like. We want to start with the slash just like we had before so that when we browse to it, it makes sense. And let's do something like hidden servlets and then let's name it hello world do. Now do is just an extension that's commonly used for servlets as kind of a convention. So we're going to go ahead and do that here as well. You could name it whatever you want. You could actually change that to anything in the world and it will still work just fine. All we're doing is telling the system that if the request is coming in and they want to go to hidden servlets slash hello world do, they need to map to the hello world class, which will then display. So let's go ahead and run our code and see how our mapping works. So we'll go ahead and save our changes. And then of course we have our existing server and we have our hello world servlet. So we'll go ahead and restart the server. And you can of course check, remember my decision if you'd like to skip some of that so you don't see it every time. And it brings up the web INF web XML. Well, that's great. That's the file that I was on. So that's what I actually expected. So what I'm gonna do is just remove that and I'm going to change to hidden servlets and I'm going to change this to hello world.do. And there's our servlet mapped exactly as we expected. There's still one problem, however. We didn't turn off the original one. Browse to hello world, it's still there. Well, why is that the case? We remapped it, we took control of it in the deployment descriptor. Yes, we did. But with the IDE and the 3.0 and greater versions, you can do some annotations on top of these servlets, and that allows you to actually take control of it right on the annotations. So what we saw when we actually created our servlet, there was an annotation at the very top that said web servlet and slash hello world. 
Now this automatically deployed to the hello world path, and so therefore that's why it's still displaying. So what we want to do is change this one as well. So let's change it to hidden servlets, and we'll change this next part to hello world two dot. We'll just use do again. But basically here we have a new path that's a little different and allows us to see that we've now turned off hello world. So again, every time we hit this, we have to restart and make sure that everything's in place that we need. As you change code, in order for it to propagate to the server, of course it has to run. So there's our hello world.do, and what we need to do is change this to hello world2.do, and there we'll see our servlet is now mapped just like we expected, and we can verify as well that hello world is no longer showing, and we get the error when we hit that. And so that wraps up our look at changing the WebXML file in order to take control of the deployment of our servlet. And we can actually see that we can actually do some of that as well through the annotations.